see, are we? Yes, hello, hello, and welcome. Today, we are looking at power yoga. Yes, today is day 21, and we are at the, we are climbing down the hill. We have collected the mountain. We have collected poses, and now we're going to put a bit of power behind them. Power yoga means moving into poses a bit more quickly. It means holding poses for a bit longer than our, than is usual, challenging ourselves through the hold. And overall, you will want to be in the menstrual phase of soldier, follicular, or of queen, which is the time when we're about, excuse me, peacemaker, when we are just about to ovulate, ovulate, and then the few days after ovulation. So these extroverted, more energetic phases, you've got energy to burn. Burning it on the mat is a great place to do that. And we are going to just quickly ground. I'm already kind of amped for these poses. So excuse me, I'm like, ah. But, um, and if you're not in those two phases, then I want you to pull back and don't hold things as long and definitely pay attention to technique for everybody. This is across the board. You will injure yourself if you're holding a pose and you're not um, holding yourself up correctly. The goal is not the pose. The goal is getting into the pose as efficiently as possible and keeping your the technical requirements. So I'm gonna give you cues, listen to them, follow them, try to effect them. If you're too tired or too um, stressed out from the pose to effect the pose, the cue I'm giving you, back off of the pose. The point of yoga is not to be stressed, the opposite. Okay, now that I've said the disclaimer, now let's ground into our practice for today. Today, day 21 of the sunrise, of the 30-day sunrise yoga series for beginners, unleashing the magic of yoga. Okay. Hmm. Let yourself come to the mat, all of yourself. Some of it might still be in the bed, that's okay. Some people are doing this, this practice at night. So some of you, some of yourself might be wanting to get into the bed and you're like, I just have this one last thing to do. Hmm, as much as you can be here. Breathe in through the nose. Letting the belly expand, breathe out through the nose. Breathe in through the nose. And out through the nose. How does that feel? Think about the devotion question acceptance issue situation that you that brought you to this 30 day exploration through the physical body of the mental emotional and spiritual intuitive bodies think about that just for a moment pick it up set it down let your eyes open and don't forget to journal maybe you did it before Maybe you do it after. Journal about your commitment to your exploration because that's going to keep you committed, yeah? Okay, let's now begin. We're going to start, of course, with the five Tibetan rituals, the fountain of youth. Okay. Chin parallel to the ground. Gaze is on the ground, shoulders pin to the heart. Because of the pin shoulders, the arms can expand farther. And we're going to tap, moving to in a clockwise direction. 
Let's begin. One, two, three, four, five. Bring everything together. Close your eyes. Let the spin catch you. <sighs> Moving to camel pose. Fingers point down the back towards the ground. Every point of contact with the earth is grounding to create that bi-directional communication with the earth. Rooting to rise. Eyes at the elbows face the short front side of the mat. Shoulders are pinned towards the heart. And I just realized I was standing like I, I had my chin up. So um, I'll give you that cue as well. We want to think of straightening through the neck so that the top of our head is facing the sky, not our nose or our chin or our forehead. Okay. And we're going to inhale back one. Exhale forward. Inhale back. Two. Exhale. Three. Exhale. Inhale. Four. Exhale. Inhale. Five. Exhale. Moving to J. Plant our body. The core in J is thinking about um, sinking into the ground. It's it's pinning itself towards the ground. Our we're going to support our lower back. If you're like me and have lower back problems, and let's reach up with our head, making a J with our upper body. Legs point towards the sky. Feet are activated. Barbie toe. Inhale. Exhale up. One. Inhale, exhale, two. Make sure to take your modification and work at your level. Inhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, exhale, five. Okay, and you're starting to hear my ujjayi breath coming in. Ujjayi breath. Remember, we're making an ocean with our throat. So we're going to, in, when we inhale, the belly expands. Exhale, the belly contracts. Your body needs to be warm enough to take Ujjayi. So it doesn't start at the top of the class. Just to give you an idea, it's something that your body warms up into. Okay. Fingertips are pointing towards the front side of the mat, eyes of the elbow facing the front side of the mat, shoulders pinned towards the heart, and our feet are a little bit less than hip width apart, our hands are a little bit more than hip width apart. Let's begin. Inhale, flat back. Exhale. There's one. Inhale. Exhale. Two, don't forget to use the protective grip for your wrists and hands and fingers and hands. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. And I talk about these things and I say these words and I say them quickly because we're on day 21. If this is your first day, start at one because this practice is layering and we have climbed the mountain to 15 and now we're climbing the mountain down to 30. Let's move to, let's see, we've done tabletop. So we're at the final. We are at upward to downward facing dog using that protective grip with my hands, which is also handstand preparation. Eyes of the elbows face towards the front side of the mat and take your position um, where you are. You know which level you're on and let's do it. Inhale, exhale back, downward facing dog. 
Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, rolling through the shoulders like a wave, through the spine. Inhale. Exhale, push back to downward facing dog. That's three. Inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. That's four. Inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. That's five. Wonderful. From here, let's just take one breath in. Exhale, om or a vigorous monster breath out. You can even take lion's breath. In lion's breath, the eyes are going to go towards the sky and the tongue is going to push out, okay? So, and honestly, there's a whole, um, you'll take your hands, face them out, eyes to the elbow are facing out and hands are gonna face out. And there is a way to sit, but I'm not gonna walk you through that because we've got to get to our power series. So inhale, exhale, lion's breath. <sighs> Okay, great. So, as I said before, power means getting into the poses with more precision, which makes them more efficient, which requires you to hold more, have more balance, and we're going to hold poses a little bit longer. So, faster transitions and longer holds. Pushing down, rooting to rise into dasana. Inhale, two arms come up overhead. Exhale, fold through prayer pose with the hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Putting two hands on the ground, we are going to all walk back to plank. And you've seen this part before. Here, we're going to hold plank 20 seconds each direction. Breathing through this. Making sure in plank, we want our feet to feel like they're pressing up against a wall, flat against a wall. Our hands are using the activated grip. The eyes at the elbow are facing the front side of the mat. Okay, pushing into side plank, face towards the screen. So that could be left or right for you. Pushing into that hand, we're on our next 10 seconds. I mean, 20 seconds. And this, we wanna keep our hips towards the sky, not down towards the sky if you can, but make sure to support yourself, whichever direction, I mean, wherever you are in your side plank. And other direction, side plank. Making sure to breathe the whole time. Doing poses without breathing is dancing. We are doing yoga. And again, remember you can take modified versions of these poses. You've done other days with me, you know what the modified versions are. Expanding the body, reaching from fingertip to base of the arm, base of this column you've made with your body. And lastly, we're going to take back from tabletop. Remember, you can stay in tabletop. We're going to point back. Twenty seconds here. The activated grip matters more now than ever. Next, we're going to come back to tabletop and we're going to just turn back around to come to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, which in itself is a power pose, we're going to, so you're activating here. This is, we're hanging out here for a minute. From downward facing dog, when you're ready, we're going to bring the right foot to the sky, through the heel, reaching through the heel. So let's push down into the right hand, the left hand, activated grips, and the left foot 
pushing into those three points, the right heel comes to the sky. And this is three-legged dog. We do this often as a transition in sun salutations, but this in itself is a pose, and it's one we often use in power. You're gonna hold here. And remember, efficiency of pose. Think about how you're transitioning to each pose. And now you're gonna bring the knee through, and I want you to bring the knee to the nose. So we're going to bring the knee through, and as we move forward, just like we did when we were rolling through from upward facing dog to downward facing dog, we're going to just bring our head back and our knee forward and tap our nose. Let's do three taps. One, two, three. Push back to three-legged dog. And let's take the other side. No, let's take it through to warrior one. So bring the foot back through and place it between the two hands for warrior one. Swivel that left back foot to the ground so that it's on a diagonal. Push into the knife edge of the left side of the left foot. Push into the front right foot grounding down through both feet, keeping the hips as square as you can with the hands on the hip as a correction or modification for this pose. And now we're in the next, one of the next most popular poses, warrior one. Why is it a power pose? Because you're constantly activate, um, constantly trying to get the hips to square towards the front of the mat back up, shoulders pinned, and there's a lot of, there's a large spiral that's happening. You're fighting in one direction, your front side body wants to be towards the front of the mat by turning to the left with our right foot in front, and your um, lower body, your upper body wants to turn towards the front of the mat, your lower body wants to turn towards the front of the mat. But the way that we have our feet arranged, it makes it very difficult for that. And so that tension is creating the power. And then we're going to inhale here and we're going to rotate to warrior two. Remember in warrior two, we might expand our pose a little bit, expand, excuse me, expand our stance, expand our feet, rooting into those feet. Remember, somebody could sit here. And notice we're holding these for much longer periods of time than we usually would if this was a typical yoga flow. But holding doesn't mean static. Holding actually means reach. It means thinking about um, what's happening? So there's still little tiny movements. There's micro adjustments happening. So is my knee at 90 degrees? Is my back foot, is my energy pushing into the knife edge of that left foot? Am I planted in between my two feet? Is there this tension? Am I doing this? Am I leaning? Am I leaning towards my front leg? Or am I feeling that slight pull towards the back of the mat? Are my shoulders pinned? Inhale, we're going to just take reverse warrior. I like to take my back left arm and tuck it into my hip. And I grab my the front of my right hip with that right hand. And then I'm gonna pin into this moment as we spoke about yesterday. And I'm going to bend from there. For reverse warrior. Reverse warrior gets easy if I push harder into the front leg, into the right leg. I'm watching the time. And unfolding back to warrior two and rotating, bringing my left arm forward, swiveling my hips, rotating back, shortening my stance to warrior one. And from here, I'm going to take warrior three. So our body is already oriented towards the front of the mat. We want to be 
directly facing the front of the mat. And we're gonna push off of the back leg. Hands are gonna to come to prayer. And this is your warrior three, if that feels right for today. You could push a little farther into your right foot. That's your warrior three. It's about the transition just as much as it's about getting to the idea of the pose. This could be your warrior three. Now I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna lean my body forward until my upper back is flat, is parallel to the ground. And I'm gonna bring my leg up to meet it. Bring it up, 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 up. This is not ballet, so it's not an arabesque. We have a flat front side body parallel to the ground. The back side body is parallel to the sky. The front of the left leg is parallel to the ground. The back of the left leg is parallel to the sky. My foot is flexed. And bring everything up. Bring, excuse me, <laughs> bring the left foot down and the right foot up. Left foot down, right foot up. Gently arriving to Tadasana with hands at the heart. Inhale, let the hands come to either side of the body. And let's take the other side. Inhale, two arms. I'm gonna just go like this so that you can see me more easily on this side. Inhale, two arms come up overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, press to flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, two arms come to the ground. And remember here, we're going to walk to plank. Walking back to plank. And let's start our 20 seconds. In plank, things we wanna think about because this pose is always fluid. We wanna think about the flow of energy moving through our hands and then through our body, through our hands, up our activated grips through our elbows, are, my, are the eyes of my elbow facing the front of the mat. Oh, there's 20 seconds. Push back, I mean, excuse me, push now to have your left or right, whatever side is gonna face the screen. Let's take side plank. And we're reaching now through these fingertips. So now our focus is having energy move through the fingertips and through the ground. That's the exchange of energy through this left foot that's on the ground or right foot that might be flat to the ground. And we can always play a little bit, bringing the right leg up or actually extending it and grabbing it. It's not in my practice right now. And let's take the other side. Efficiency. So I put my right foot, I mean, my right hand onto the ground, my right foot. So my opposite hand onto the ground, opposite foot is onto the ground. Body is rotating to the other side so that my hand and foot, same hand, same foot, are supporting the weight of my entire body. Or you're doing the modified version of side plank. Side plank gets easier when you think about the hips pointing towards, moving towards the sky. But at the same time, make sure to keep that heart open. We want a flat plane like we're being squeezed through, through, through three, I mean, between two piece, pieces of glass. And let's go to the back. My whole, all four parts, all four points are on the ground, hand, hand, foot, foot. And I'm just going to walk myself so that I go to tabletop first. And then after I've arranged everything for tabletop, I'm just gonna make a flat board with my body. Here, the gaze can be forward to the sky or breaking your neck backwards. <sighs> thinking about that activated grip, thinking about those shoulders pinning towards your heart. Otherwise, you'll feel like you're sinking. Five more seconds here. It's amazing how fast 20 seconds can go. Walking back up to tabletop, bringing your head up if it was backwards down. And we're going to flip back over in as precise movements as we can. <laughs> flip back over and push to downward facing dog. 
holding here. Thinking about that grip. Thinking about grabbing with those fingertips, the palm of the hand, like you're palming a basketball. This is your preparation for handstand. Okay, let's bring, this time do listen to which leg I'm talking about. Let's bring the left foot. So pinning the right hand, left hand, right foot to the ground. Bring the left heel towards the sky. There's your three-legged dog. We want our hips to stay uh, rotated towards the ground and we want to increase that movement up and down that height of our leg over time, but with our legs parallel. We can open it and that is a different pose. We want everything to stay square. I'm purposefully doing that. So don't rotate that left hip. Bring the knee through and we're just gonna take a tap. We're gonna let our knee Kiss our nose, one, two, three, and push back to three-legged dog, and push through, knee comes through again, and this time it's gonna plant between the two hands. We're gonna swivel that back right foot, weight goes into the right edge of the right foot and the left foot, squaring our hips even manually towards the front of the mat, the short side of the mat. And let's bring our two hands up for warrior one. Feeling that tension. The top of my upper body wants to um, turn towards the front side of the mat. My lower body also wants to turn towards the front side of the mat, the short side of the mat. But the way my legs are placed, it's making it difficult. <laughs> Pushing into those points of contact with the earth. Shoulders are pinned towards the heart. Mm, breathing. Inhale, rotate to warrior two. Mm. And just holding here. Okay, inhale, pinning our hips down, thinking down with our left hip, we're going to bring our right arm around so that it might even peekaboo out um, and grab onto the left hip, reach up and over and over and bending the body, taking that left, taking the side bend towards the right so that we have our left side body really getting that stretch. Hmm. In reverse warrior. Hmm. And coming back to warrior two, swiveling to warrior one, shortening the stance, just meeting here for a moment. We're going to lean it back a little bit to prepare to go to warrior three with hands in prayer. We're going to push forward into warrior three. My upper body comes towards flat. My lower body rises towards flat. So my upper body lowers to flat and my lower body rises to flat and they come together at this flat moment. If that's where you are in your practice, remember you can stop at any point along the way. To get more balance, you can always bend your supporting leg, your left leg. Hmm. And bring everything up. Upper body comes up, lower body comes down. Gently, gently, gently through grace. Controlled. That's part of what makes it power yoga is that you gotta control the transitions too. That's yoga. Hands are in prayer, hands come to Tadasana. And let's come to the mat. Let's ease our bodies down. And let the powerful work that we did today, let it rest in the body. Let it find a home. We're in Shavasana now and we're 
going to hang out here for just three minutes. Letting the work that we did, thinking about the aggravation that very possibly came up. Getting frustrated with the time, maybe feeling like you need to do more weightlifting so that you're strong enough to do certain poses. The thing about yoga is that you have the best muscle, you have the best trainer, which the best amount of weight, which is your body. Your body weight is plenty. Your body weight mixed with gravity, plenty there. Stay in the practice. Going outside of the practice to supplement the support or muscles that you need um, can get you to poses, but it doesn't give a chance for all of the little moments that your body has to go through in order to develop those muscles according to the poses, according to the transitions. It cheats them of that opportunity and cheats you of the holistic growth that can take place because of the time and consistency you put into growing your body into being able to do these poses. We're on our final minute. Okay, let's wiggle the toes, wiggle the fingers, wiggle the arms, wiggle the legs. Bring your body weight to lay on the right side of your body, all everything on the right side. Push down with your left hand against the ground and let's come to easy pose. We just did a lot of giving, so you may need to receive palms up, shoulders pinned, eyes closed. We went on a journey. It involved more effort and it required you to build on all of the work you've done so far. For those of you who worked in your level, with your body instead of forcing to be yourself be where you're where you're not yet ready to be i send you much respect it was such a humbling experience for me when i was 20 years into my practice and i received some feedback about my practice and i essentially rebuilt it and I had to start from zero again and rebuild all of my poses. And if I had not gotten that information, I don't think I could practice now. My body would have been wrecked. So please work where, from where you are. All of us have been there. Some of us, like me, more than once have had to be full on beginners. Okay. Think about your commitment as you bring your hands to your heart. Bow to that commitment. Bow to yourself. Think about your friends and family, 
your home, your community, your work colleagues, your world, and what a difference you're making because of the decision you made this morning or this evening or whenever time, whatever time it is for you to come to the mat. Thank you for joining me on this 21st day of this Sunrise Yoga Series, Unleashing the Magic of Yoga. Thank you for unleashing your magic. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. Namaste.